What is going on YouTube? Okay, so firstly, just thank you guys so much for sharing the second last video I posted, the one about camera hacks. It just went crazy. Like, I think it's almost on 300,000 views on YouTube, over 300,000 shares the last time I checked on Facebook, and 21 million views on Facebook. Like, Trump hands. That's tr those are Trump numbers. So, thank you guys so much. I'm really glad you're enjoying the videos. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'm glad to see you here. But onto today's video, I'm showing you guys how to make people float without any sort of trickery, except Photoshop trickery. So, so trickery, we're gonna be using trickery. So let's get into the computer. But first, I need to show you guys what masking is because that's what we're gonna be using here. In photography, you get a plate and the back of a plate, a back plate, <laughs> bad jokes. I'll just show you with some paper, it'll make it a lot easier. So you've got your background, and you've got your foreground. You can't see the background through the foreground unless you make a hole in it. This is called a mask. So now you can see through your foreground and you can see certain parts of your background depending where it's positioned. But we don't want it this way, we want it sort of inverted. So now you can see just a small section of your foreground, i.e. the people, on the background. Okay cool, so once you understand that it's actually very simple. You've got your foreground and you've got your background. If you want to see some of your background, you have to take some of your foreground away and vice versa. So what you want to do is if you're shooting people, you want your people to be standing in front of the background that you're actually going to composite them in. It makes it a lot easier with color correction and stuff like that and you don't have to balance the images. Although you are able to do it the other way if you really want to and shoot someone against a blank background, cut them out and then stick them onto the background. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna make people float in the scene that they actually were in. So let's hop onto the computer and I'll show you what I mean. So these are my images. This is the background. This is just a clear blank image of the background with nothing in it, except whatever that is, I'm not sure. A stick, driftwood, okay. And then you've got your image of your people. So let me explain what's happening in this image. We've got one of the groomsmen holding up the bride and we're gonna get rid of him and leave her and the groom behind to make it look as if she were floating. Now to do that, we need something to replace his body with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this background and you can see they're not very aligned either. But that's totally fine. Photoshop has this auto align feature, which is just magic. So what you wanna do is you want to start off by editing this image slightly. I've already done that. Just drop the highlights so I can have more detail in the highlights. Brought up the shadows a bit and brought the whites down. And I've also applied some profile corrections. So basically what this does, it just gets rid of that sort of dark edge that you get from wide lenses or some Canon lenses. And Lightroom automatically applies the perfect preset and fixes that for you. So great. Now I'll show you a little trick. All you have to do is once you've edited one of the images in your series, like your foreground and your background, just press Control A or Command A on, on Mac and click Sync and click synchronize and that basically will apply your settings across all of your images so they're all the same. Cool, so now we're gonna select our two images, right click, say edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. So now we've got our foreground and our background layers. Great, now they aren't aligned so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select both of our layers, control click or click, command click and click, file, uh, edit, auto align, auto, okay. Now what's going to happen here is Photoshop's going to automatically try and match the background and the foreground so that they're perfectly aligned. This helps a lot if you haven't had time to set up a tripod and shoot with a tripod or you can't hold still enough like me with very shaky hands. So this fixes that. Great, so now we can see that our images are actually aligned very well. Now this is where the masking comes into play, just like we spoke about earlier. What we're going to do is we're going to click on our image and click this little button here. So this is the mask button and that creates a layer mask. Now on this layer mask, you can select your brush tool and you've got black and white. So if you paint with black, magic, 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 magic. What's happening is it's creating a hole in this top layer so that you can see what's below it. So now basically all you have to do is go around your image and erase what you don't want there. Simple as that. Okay, great. So once you're at this point, I'm gonna show you what to do next. So you've seen I've left it, I've done quite a rough job. You can see that it's sort of not matching around the edges. And that's because there's waves in the background here and they're changing, the background's changing. It's a lot better and a lot easier if the background is solid through the entire thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a softer brush, drop the hardness down to zero, and then make it quite large and then sort of just fade it. And you can sort of fade the background in 
so that it doesn't look too obvious that it was put in afterwards. So the next step is to do something about these legs. Now, the only reason this doesn't look so great is because he was standing on a chair because he wanted to get them both really, really high up into the air. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Lightroom and I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this image. So basically I was getting them to run out of the shot in this image. So I'm gonna open that in Photoshop again. I'm gonna copy the layer over to this image and I'm gonna cut his leg off <laughs> and take it across into the other image. Just do something simple like that and create a mask again and there we go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it right there. That's about right. And we're gonna mask. So we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did before. We're gonna use our brush tool. This point here has three legs. So now we need to get rid of his actual legs and replace them with the floating legs. So to do that, we're gonna go back to our previous layer and just mask them out. The same again, masking. Gone, magic. Now it's only got one leg. It's as simple as duplicating our top layer. You just have to drag it onto that new layer icon and move it around. Send it behind, just so it looks more natural. Blend it again with the, your masking tool, the same as we did originally. And there you go, it's got two new legs. So there's a few other little tweaks that we need to do to this image. Firstly, his hand. So this guy's hand needs to get removed. The best way to do that is go onto our image. We're going to use our clone tool. So now what this does is if you hold Alt and you select an area, you can copy that area somewhere else. So we're just gonna copy this part of our address and place it here. Now there are a few things that could be tweaked as well, like these edges, these jagged edges. So we can do that as well. An easy way to do that is to simply just right click and click apply layer mask. So now you've got your floating couple on top of the image. Open up liquify. And now what this does is it lets you mold this. So we can use this either push left tool or we can use the forward walk tool and adjust the size. And you can sort of play around here until you feel comfortable with what it looks like. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit more smoother so we have a smooth sort of look, click OK. And there we go, voila. Now this image can be tweaked in a few other ways as well, like I have in the final image. I've sort of made it wider, I've sort of added a little bit around the edges just to make it a little bit better. But that's completely up to you. That's all creative freedom. However you decide to color your image or anything like that. I'll show you how I color my image. So I'll save this image as a PSD and then open it back up in Lightroom. Maybe just crop it a bit. Then let's go through the color settings. I'd actually like this image to be a little bit warmer because it's on a beach scene, sort of nice beach time. And then you can play with colors as well. If you want to add more colors to the shadow or more colors to the highlights, it's up to you. Quite a common color combo is blue and orange or blue and red. Um, and you can basically add some, some yellow to your highlights or red to your highlights and some blues to your shadows. And there you go, that's how you can make people float in your images. Now obviously it's very rough around the edges here because I did this very quickly for the sake of this tutorial, but if you spend some more time on it and just make sure your edges are very smooth and your masking is done very well, then you won't have any issues like that and it'll look great. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did like this video, please don't forget to like the video, hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more stuff like this in the future and follow me on Instagram as always if you wanna see some behind the scenes of some of my photography. The name will be up here. Uh, but until then, I shall see you guys in the next video. Cheers.